Hey, what's up guys? Mike, Black Ruffle Coffee. Today on Pro Tips, let's talk about a battle belt setup. I remember when this wasn't a thing. In special operations, we didn't have all of our kit tethered to our bodies on a belt. We had it sporadically placed all over. Um, we had different holsters, different uh, pouches on different pieces of kit. And then through the global war on terror evolving, we started looking at specific types of kit and going, man, we need life-saving kit attached to us at all times. So it didn't matter what carrier or what vest you wore. What mattered is life-saving kit was here and you could put whatever you want on your body, on your combat chassis. So this has evolved over time, but this is the same belt I had when I was a team sergeant over a decade ago. Same exact belt, like the same belt. Uh, the overarching idea is I have life-saving pieces of equipment on my belt that I could load out quickly and rapidly put on my person, on my body, and then start maneuvering, start fighting in self-defense. So let's go over my belt and my particular setup. Um, this setup was built for me uh, with the idea of uh, operating in austere environments where I might use it for force, force protection and have it configured, but have it at my feet if I was driving a car or have it uh, near the door if I was in a particular safe place or base of operations. And you know, I'm not gonna sleep with this on, but I have it at the ready to grab it, put it on, and then go to work. So I didn't do that with my body armor. I didn't have a lot of body armor that was configured where I, I thought about putting the thing on and then being weighed down and cumbersome with life-saving equipment. I mean, that's a thing too, but this was my rapid deployment situation. So if you're using this, this could be force protection for you as well as a nice convenient setup to train with on a range or in training period. Let's start off with the belt itself. The belt itself is a Cobra belt with a Cobra buckle that's made by Viking Tactics. Kyle Lamb's a good buddy of ours and I've been using the same belt for over a decade. The belt itself is a Brokos belt made by Viking Tactics, which has a little bit more thickness here for more real estate for accessories and a little bit thinner here. It's also padded on this end to wick away moisture and just to give you a little bit more comfort. On this side, starting with the closest to me, on my right side, my dominant side, this is my holster. Big shout out to Danger Close Tactical for that cool Hawaii patch. Got that from them when I trained in Hawaii. This is a Safari Land ALS. Same holster I've used throughout my career. I have a SIG pistol here in a Safari Land setup that are interchangeable with modular adaptability in mind. I like that idea. I don't like doing all the hard work of weaving belts and setting it up and having to change the whole system. I could just remove this, quick detach, and then swap holsters for different setups. I have my tourniquet holder with a TACMED solution soft T wad and the importance of this being behind the gun, and remember, this people might look at this and go, oh, that's too close. Well, as it flexes around your body, it, it gives you plenty of room in real estate. But what it is, is it's in line with my dominant hand to be able to reach to it and get ready access in a rapid deployment. Life-saving equipment, you want rapid deployments. So as it's sitting on my waist like this, I also have access from tourniquet to a last-ditch effort and utility or in self-defense with a Dan Winkler knife. This is one of my favorite Winkler knives. I carried this for years and years and years, and it's right behind my med kit. My med kit is clearly identified with this fancy logo here, the universal red cross that I drew with a Sharpie. The cool thing about that is it doesn't degrade over time. Um, I mean, it actually does, but you could renew it anytime because it's a marker, guys. It's a freaking marker. I drew that. This pouch is a med pouch with ready access to a basic hemorrhage, hemorrhage response kit, basic stop the bleed kit that has all my combat gauze, compression bandage, nitrile gloves, all that good stuff. 
And then moving over to here, um, right there, see that right there? That's done by my dog, Pearl. That's why I said Pearl and then an arrow and did this little guy, because I'm a utilitarian. I, I, I'm not a pretty boy. It doesn't matter to me if there's a little notch taken out. I'm proud of that, it's character, it's called character. So this is a utility dump pouch. This could be for my spare magazines. It could be for my ear protection. It could be for a loose brass or ammo. Uh, whatever the intended purpose is, I have it here and it rolls and stows nicely, but I always keep it out because I need that utility. I train people in firearms for a living, so I need the access to this constantly. On this side, now we're getting around to the left side of my waistline, I have two pouches for a carbine. I want to set myself up for pistol and carbine. Even if I'm only working a pistol and training, it has both pistol and carbine. As you notice right here on this side, on this pouch, I have one that's more for quick access. This goes down, this pulls out, then that's a thing. This one is stowable. This is a, I think this is a cry pouch that has Velcro over top because I don't need ready access. If I'm ready accessing this, likelihood, the likelihood of me deliberately going to this in a tactical reload is more realistic and I can afford the time. But I also want the security of its position in ammo and making sure it doesn't come out. I mean, that's why I have bungee, that's why I have this. I see guys running magazines and all kinds of different stuff all the time and you do one stress shoot where they have to run and gun and all this stuff falls out. Uh, that's a good indication that you need to change the setup of your kit. Lastly, I have this Kydex magazine holder. Why did I go with this? I think this is a Blade Tech. Well, I like plastic for holding magazines because I want quick, ready access where it slides in and out, but I also want the ability to tighten with a screw the amount of retention that I need. That variable is important, especially when conducting operations or doing something that involves stress. You should be training to stress anyway. So running and gunning, running around obstacles, doing burpees, whatever that is, that retention screw will set that in place and it won't come out. But when I do need it and I grab it, it's slick with, with uh, Kydex and not nylon, which can be cumbersome at times. So this is my battle belt. Um, it's set up for life-saving equipment use and force protection, which is self-defense as well as training. I recommend everybody get this particular setup. And this is a very intimate way of you personifying your kind of status. I don't think there's any one in all be all solution. Some guys and gals like different setups. They like straight belts. They like uh, external belts that go on internal belts to each their own. As long as you have these fundamental pieces, magazines, pistol, carbine, accessory, general purpose, dump pouches, um, even a GP pouch if you don't have if you have the real estate, a first aid, individual first aid kit, an IFAC with basic hemorrhage response, a knife of some sort, straight blade, a tourniquet that's readily accessible, that's open and, and able for somebody to see, identify in case you're the casualty, and a holster. And if you get a little bit of real estate for your Velcro, that always helps too to, to get your own little signature on things. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that segment of Pro Tips. Go to philcraftsurvival.com to learn about training schedules, about continuing education on all things preparedness. And remember to stay alert and stay alive.